Give it torpedo. And one and two and. Here's the silly idea. What if we used explosions to power engines? Huh? What do you think? Pretty genius, right? I know what you're thinking. In Texas, most of the engines in the world already run on explosions. What in the Earth's crust are you talking about? Explosions? You mean puny deflagrations with no power at all? Like this? I mean a real explosion. A detonation. Like this. Did you catch the difference? I think you did. The deflagration was like... Bloop! While the detonation was a bang! While also casting a shockwave that passed through me like an angry ghost. The big difference is that I filled the first balloon with air and butane, and because air has some oxygen in it, it oxidizes the butane and releases heat and gases. But do you know what has more oxygen than air? Pure oxygen. Yep, I filled the second balloon with oxygen and butane, and the powerful explosion. The use of detonations in an internal combustion engine might not be a great idea, since they sometimes occur by accident and destroy the engine, even without using pure oxygen. This is what we call knocking. Nah, my idea is to use this on another type of engine. Jet engines. So, a while ago on a lovely Saturday morning, I had one of the happiest moments in my life when I was able to start a pulse jet engine that I built myself. I was also able to startle my entire neighborhood. Those engines are loud. A valveless pulse jet engine is one of the simplest jet engines you can find. You inject fuel in, and because of the clever geometry, they create a cycle of self-aspiration of air that mixes with the fuel and gets ignited again. That's why it has pulse on the name, it's not continuous. My idea is to use detonations on this type of engine to get more power. There's already a lot of research on this field, so this might go well. Time to design. As you can see, I 3D printed a small combustion chamber in resin, to which I attached two electro valves, one for the fuel and another one for the air. I'm not using oxygen right now because I read in this book that you can't get detonation with air and fuel alone. It's really, really hard to do it, but you can do it. Also, oxygen scares the crap out of me. One of the tricks to get detonation is to use a very long tube. Without it, the combustion doesn't have time to accelerate to the speed of sound. So, that's why I'm using this long acrylic tube. I mean, it's acrylic because I want to see what's going on. For the ignition, I'm using two screws to form a spark gap and a cheap high voltage generator you can buy at Amazon. To control the ignition and the electro valves, I'm using some relays and an Arduino. Let's give this a test. Three, two, one. Ooh. So, I know I'm getting deflagration sometimes for sure, because the sound is like a humph, but other times I hear a loud clap, which might or might not be a detonation. I'm not sure. So I'm going to use another trick to get detonations. It's called the Shelkin Spiral. It is in essence basically sticking a metal spring in the barrel. It helps with odds of getting a shockwave. Seems simple enough, so let's give it a try. Oh, by the way, I was editing this and I just realized how this might be confusing, because that tube there says oxygen. It's not oxygen, it's butane. I just reutilized the tube. Moving on. Yeah, the spring seems to be helping, but I'm not sure if this is the best I can do. The only way to know for sure is to use oxygen. So, here it is. Let's plug it in. Just so you know, this is the first time I'm ever gonna do this. Uh, I put a timer because we're gonna test with the oxygen for 10 seconds, and those 10 seconds is so I can get out of the room, because I'm afraid this is gonna explode. So, once I plug that in, I'm gonna run. And I'm gone! 10 seconds later. Yeah. 
In the name of science, I tried my best to measure the speed of the shockwave and with a little bit of creative math I got 80 meters per second, which is shy of Mach 1, really shy. But I measured the speed at the beginning of the tube, so maybe it accelerates to the speed of sound when it travels down the barrel? <laughs> Look at that! I'm talking about. <laughs> Did you catch it? I don't know if you can hear this, but it's making such a loud noise, it, it sounds like a gun. It's insane. So, do you know I just said it sounds like a gun? Yeah, I took the liberty of 3D printing some projectiles so I can do some in the name of science tests. In. Okay, purge is done. Bullet in. Projectile. Projectile. Not bullet. Okay, and now we wait. Jesus Christ. Just insane. <laughs> I made a gun. I mean, uh, projectile launcher. Bam! Did it break? Oh, this is good resin. The projectile was coming out so fast, I couldn't really see what was going on, so I recorded it 256 times slower, and the bullet was exiting at a speed of 30 meters per second, which is really insane. I wonder what that might do to a tomato. <laughs> it wouldn't be a, an intact video if I didn't test it on a tomato. Let's do this. Oh, the bullet is here! <laughs> yeah, we killed him dead. So I promise I'm gonna get on with the video, but I'm gonna try one more because I wanna see if I, I can pierce through the tomato. So, it pierced through, look. One hole here, one hole here, bullet outside, tomato very dead, nice. Let's move on with the video. If I want to turn this into an actual jet engine, I need to increase the frequency of the pulses because the pulse jet engine puts out about 200 to 450 pulses per second, which is a lot. I don't think I can do those numbers with this one because of the electro valves. They can't open and close that fast, but I'm going to see what I can do. That was a little bit scary. Also, I just realized I reached the limit of what I can do with plastic. It's time to leave the prototype and go to the final version. Let's go metal! Okie dokie, so here we have the metal version uh, and I'm gonna test it to see uh, if it's working like normally, just a, a pulse per second and then we're gonna try like a higher frequency to see if this heats up a lot. Yeah, just need to connect the Arduino. Three, two, one. Okay, now I reprogrammed the Arduino to basically give about 10 pulse per second. Let's see what happens. Time for the magic! Okay, go! Almost, almost 200 degrees. Look at that, it's fuming. Yeah. So I think I finally got the values right. I mean, the detonations are coming out uh, clean and consistent. Uh, what I think I'm gonna do now is put the entire engine on a rail and see if it moves. Because this is a jet engine. If it doesn't have thrust, well, it's not very useful, is it? Give it torpedo.
it's moving all right. I wouldn't say it's the most powerful engine I ever built, but then again, I'm only doing 10 pulses per second. With better valves, it should do better. Something that is noteworthy is the exhaust of this engine. It behaves in a very peculiar way. It makes a mushroom shape. It's unlike any other engine I ever seen. It's almost like the exhaust is going so fast, it's smashing itself against the air on the atmosphere and expanding. You see, there's a general equation for thrust and it has two parts. The speed part of thrust and the pressure part of thrust. In most jet and rocket engines, the pressure part of thrust is irrelevant because it's too small, but not on this one. On this one, the pressure part is the biggest one, because this engine to some degree is using pressure to push itself forward. The big difference here is that a normal jet engine uses a shift in momentum to push itself forward, but not this engine. This engine is literally pushing against the atmosphere, like you would push against a wall. This engine fascinates me very much, and it's a great way to explore detonation as a propulsion tool, but is also flawed because of the pulsed flow. If somehow we find a way to build an engine that uses detonation with a continuous flow, well, the thrust would be insane. Wait, did I say it would be insane? Oh, I meant it is insane, because there's already an engine that uses detonation continuously, and it's called the Rotating Detonation Engine, or RD as the cool kids like to call it. And it happens to be the subject of my next video, so don't forget to subscribe. In the meantime, I'm leaving all the 3D models in the description of the video, so you can try it for yourself. If you don't have a 3D printer to try it for yourself, well, I can help with that too. On my last video, I gave away a 3D printer to the most liked comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The winner was Mad269E. If you also want to win a 3D printer, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video, and post a comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The most liked comment will receive a brand new 3D printer. Well, um, this is everything for today. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya! Thank you.